All right, thank you so much for your patience as we watched our attendees continue to climb. We wanted to give folks a, a moment to settle in and, and arrive so uh, we can get started now. Um, hello and welcome to this Cushing Academy open house uh, focused on academic support. I'm Jennifer Willis, Director of Teaching and Learning at Cushing. I have been eagerly awaiting this opportunity to showcase our team and our students this evening. Uh, in a moment, you will hear from our faculty who will introduce themselves and provide you with information about various aspects of our academic support program. Then you'll hear from a few current students and a current parent who can talk about their path to Cushing and their experience here and within the academic support program. The goal of the evening is really to provide you with different perspectives and to ultimately give you a chance to imagine yourself as part of the Cushing community. Uh, first, however, I want to just welcome each of you to the panel. We recognize that it is a hard time to visit schools, to feel, uh, get a feel for the culture of an institution um, while managing the pandemic safely. And we are really pleased that your interest has brought you here tonight. We look forward to the opportunity to answer your questions. Um, as we go along, please feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. We also have some of the questions uh, from the registration process. And so we will take time to answer those as well tonight. Uh, to begin, I want to talk a little bit about the program itself. Uh, we are incredibly proud of our history and the reputation that we have built over almost 50 years. In the uh, 1970s, Dr. Joe Curry, who was head of school for 28 years at Cushing, developed a plan for the establishment of a learning skills program designed to support students with mild learning differences. In designing the program, Dr. Curry partnered with experts in the field, including Dr. Jean Chawl, one of the most foremost reading specialists in the US and the head of the Harvard Reading Laboratory. Dr. Curry also partnered with Doug Powell, a well-respected psychologist in Cambridge, uh, who was among the first to be doing thorough and professional psychoeducational testing. And uh, Rich Henry joined the program in 1982. He brought an expertise in study skills, reading and math support, uh, and he ultimately expanded the program throughout the 80s and the 90s. He, uh, Rich, uh, recognized the importance of learning skills teachers, which is what our faculty were called at that point in time, living uh, in the dorms, coaching and involving themselves in the day-to-day -day experience of the boarding school life. Our program has expanded from one teacher and a handful of students to now include six faculty members and about 60 students. Our faculty members continue to be deeply invested, not only in their role as learning specialists, but also uh, in their contributions to daily life throughout our campus more broadly. For those of you who have already spent time speaking with me as part of the admissions process, uh, you know that it's very easy for me to get caught up in my enthusiasm for the program uh, and for this group of faculty members. And so before I uh, get myself going too much. I do want to turn it over to them, uh, but not without making just particular note of both the educational backgrounds as well as the ongoing investment in professional development within this group of faculty. These folks have made um, an incredible professional commitment uh, to supporting neurodiverse learners, and I just honestly cannot speak highly enough about the um, combination of technical knowledge, uh, tactical skill, and emotional intelligence that exists within this team. So I'm so excited for you to hear from everybody tonight. Um, I will turn things over to Deb Harmon, and you will have the chance to hear from the group to learn more about some of the different aspects of our program. Deb? Hi, good evening. Uh, as Jen said, my name is Deb Harmon. I was actually hired by Rich Henry back in the 90s. So this marks my 30th year at Cushing, which is hard to believe. Um, my daughter, Jane, is a senior at Cushing this year. My son, Harry, graduated last spring. And my husband, Donnie, is one of Cushing's certified athletic trainers. Um, we currently are living in a senior boys dorm. So as you can see, we are an all-in Cushing family. Um, well, I've had many different roles at Cushing. I've always been a part of the academic support um, team. And I really believe it's the piece of Cushing uh, that has kept me uh, at Cushing for as long as I've been here. Uh, I really find 
working with students in academic support, very rewarding. I always say it's what feeds my soul. Um, helping students unlock um, their potential and work to their potential is uh, very, very rewarding both for them and for me. Um, so academic support class is probably our most traditional um, service of support in our program, uh, and it is a class that's typically made up of four students and a learning specialist um, who uh, most typically are um, grouped by grade so that there is potential for overlap in courses, um, giving an opportunity for group or peer work as well as individual attention. Um, academic support is scheduled into a student's um, day, just like any other class at Cushing. So it meets four times a week um, for a specific class period. Um, that said, because we have a seven period schedule at Cushing, um, a student doesn't have to sacrifice or give up a class to be part of our program. Um, in actuality, we all other classes that a student wants to take or electives that a student chooses to take are scheduled in first and then uh, academic support is scheduled in last to hopefully meet the needs in all areas of a student's life. Um, sort of in tangent with that, um, typically when you begin working with one of the learning specialists, that is the teacher that you stay with uh, for your duration in the program. Uh, so I have a young man who I have worked with since his freshman year and he's now a senior and we've always worked together. It really allows um, a, for a teacher and a student to build that sort of trusting uh, learning teaching relationship uh, and not have to begin it over again each year or each term. Um, so we really value that as well. Um, Academic support class also does not have a set curriculum. Uh, it's really student driven in nature. Um, so while my, some students might need help with organization, others may need direct support with areas like reading or math, uh, while others may struggle with attention or executive functioning or anxiousness, or even a little combination of several of those things. Um, so we really try to tailor our work to individual needs. Ideally, um, a student is arriving for our class time together with a plan or idea of what they hope to accomplish during that time. But we also recognize that our students are on sort of a self-awareness continuum. Um, so we really meet them where they are uh, and help them sort of develop that self-reflection and awareness to be able to plan and prioritize for their time with us. Um, and during those sessions, whether it be preparing for a quiz um, tomorrow or next week, hopefully not yesterday. Um, we are helping them develop strategies, finding tools, um, helping them with their self-advocacy and really a, a greater sense of metacognition. Um, so whether a freshman acclimating to high school for the first time or a postgraduate joining us, um, living away from home for the first time, uh, we're helping students acclimate to Cushing um, through supporting them, with their academic life, but with the goal of helping them transition to college and the real world. So as you may or may not know, um, when students get to the college level, they really need to be able to uh, self-disclose any learning disability and or ask for accommodation. So our work is really guided by that, having students really understand themselves and learners and be able to express uh, what they need to be successful in the classroom. So that's a, a brief overview of academic support. I'm now going to have uh, turned things over to my colleague, Riley Moore, who's gonna talk about academic coaching. Riley? Thank you, Deb. Um, my name is Riley Moore and I will be, uh, I've been working here at Cushing for two years now in the academic support program, along with being a dorm parent and a track and field uh, coach as well. I'll be going over our academic coaching model, as well as our collaboration and partnership with college counseling here at Cushing. At Cushing, academic coaching is a one-to-one -one model. So that is one student to one learning specialist. This allows for our faculty member to work extremely close with our student and being able to build a really strong relationship and partnership. They will have our full attention for 50 minutes, four times a week. Um, and that's not just limited to that. They can come in and see us whenever they need to as well. This is extremely beneficial to our students and can allow for some really um, remarkable progress over the full course of an academic year. Students find this model extremely beneficial to them. 
many students have expressed how they have liked taking tests during this time, being able to build those close relationships with faculty member. And many have said they've loved to be able to have that academic space where they're able to have a breather, have relaxing and not be able to, not having to hyper-focus for the entire period of time and not feel like they're behind. Another huge benefit for coaching is the amount of uh, communication it allows for us in families with the families and teachers. We find it very important to have good communication with our students and families as it is a huge benefit for every student. Often parents can be one of the ones to give us the most insight on their child. And being one-on-one -on -one with them, we have plenty of time to meet with you, have phone calls and have communication when needed. We also can look over every piece of their day and be able to send those emails needed to teachers if we have questions right away during the class, allowing us many times to get answers before the end of class with, for that student. I've seen students come in needing a ton of support and struggling just to get through their academic day in the beginning of the year and come out the end of the year needing, not needing coaching anymore. Uh, they can move up to the regular um, support model that we offer here. Along with uh, that huge benefit that we have for our coaching model, our relationship with college counseling is a huge benefit for our students. We work hard hand in hand for all of our uh, students to get them through this college process. We understand that schools are a huge part of success for our students in college. The right school with the right supports is super important. This includes looking at services for each school, helping navigate which majors they are in, interested in and finishing up those small details on those applications. I have meetings with my students' college counselors almost weekly to check in to make sure they're doing everything possible to help our students uh, get these applications done and get into these colleges very stress-free, which is a huge weight off their shoulders. We take a proactive approach regarding the college process with our partnership with academic support and college counseling by always checking in, monitoring, and helping guide our students through the process, all the way from meeting their college counselors right about now junior year to sending in their last application right about now senior year. I do believe academic support and college counseling are some of our best programs that we do offer here, and together it can be extremely beneficial for your students. I would be happy to answer any other questions you guys may have at the end of our presentation. I'm now gonna pass it on to Fabian Lara who will be talking about teacher partnerships. Partner and communicate with all of our awesome teachers around campus. First and foremost, Cushing is a community. Many of us serve a multitude of roles on campus, and because of this, we do have a pulse on our students outside of the classroom. Many of our faculty members interact with them in a variety of ways, so we often engage in informal conversations about how our students are progressing in their different roles and spaces on campus and how that might be affecting them in the classroom. Our students' additional responsibilities might include the college application process that Riley has touched on or afternoon activities such as clubs, theater, or sports. These extracurricular commitments are shared spaces with many of our teaching faculty and a space where relationships can grow or be built anew. These relationships, along with their everyday teachers, are the ones we tap into in academic support to help our students. Of course, we might decide to meet more formally with a student's teacher to discuss specific strategies that a student is working on in their class or a strategy we might think will help that teacher support that student in the classroom or with their material. As a first year faculty member here at Cushing, I have found these types of meetings to be most beneficial in putting a face to a name for us and their teachers. This helps us to open the lines of communication more organically throughout the semester and year regarding a student's performance in the classroom on homework or on assessments. It also creates a more comfortable partnership between us and other teachers when a student might be struggling. This allows us to collaborate on specific strategies to help that student manage course material, especially when it's time sensitive. We also teach students to build strong relationships with their teachers directly through emails, meetings, or extra review sessions. This helps with the students' self-advocacy and communication skills that I know Deb mentioned with faculty that will benefit beyond Cushing Academy. Additionally, in our community, we use a learning management system that is a Blackboard program called My Cushing. Here, students can access a number of school resources um, for their use, most commonly course materials, including homework, due dates, and study materials. 
Here, teachers can post a number of resources that fit the various needs of our students, such as websites with additional practice problems or different forms of text, such as audiobooks or online summaries. From a teacher's perspective, a valuable resource on Mike Cushing is the Individualized Learning Profile, or ILP, of each academic support student, which Chandra will go over shortly. Our, our teachers use a student's ILP to best accommodate their specific needs, and if they have questions about an ILP or a student, they know to reach out to us in academic support. With that, I would like to pass things over to my academic support neighbor, Chandra, who will speak more about accommodations and standardized testing. Thanks so much, Fabian. Uh, my name is Chandra Kesslering, and I'm a learning specialist and SSD coordinator and a house parent and alumni here at Cushing. I've been here for two years and my son Mason attends and is a senior. The majority of students in academic support coaching arrive with testing in some form of individual education plan or IEP. At Cushing, we take that formal plan and the testing to create ILPs, which are called individual learning profiles. In this report, we try to highlight student strengths, maybe some challenges and list of accommodations that will support the student's academic success. These individual learning profiles are then shared with teachers of each student. As a college preparatory school, we support teachers in providing accommodations that students would qualify for at the college level. For example, things like scaffolded notes, testing in a separate area, extended time, language waivers, audiobooks, use of a calculator, and creating templates for writing. Individual learning profiles are also used externally when students are seeking accommodations for the ACT or the SAT. As I mentioned earlier, one of my responsibilities here at Cushing is to serve as the SSD coordinator. I support families and students by requesting accommodations and coordinating testing. Once our seniors have been accepted to college, individual learning profiles are also used to help request and support accommodations at the college level. We do not conduct any diagnostic testing on campus, but we will work with families to keep testing updated to inform and support our work with each student. That being said, we recognize that what we see in the testing does not fully capture a student. We align our work with students based on observations, teacher feedback, and family input. Of course, our direct work with students and the relationships that we build throughout our teaching and learning is critical. I would now like to introduce our academic support chair, Mike DeFlon, who will speak about some additional aspects of our program. Thanks, Chandra. Good evening. My name is Mike DeFlon. It is my absolute pleasure and honor to serve as chair for the academic support department. This is my first year at Cushing, but I'm not new to teaching or boarding school life. I live here on campus uh, in the Ashburn Hem House or Ash House with my family. And besides being a dorm parent, I am head coach of the boys varsity basketball team and a ropes course facilitator. I'll jump right into a topic that typically elicits different responses from students and their family, uh, study hall. Study hall occurs each night from 8 to 10 p.m., uh, Sunday through Thursday, and at Cushing, there are a few options. The first is in-room study hall. This is where most students spend their time, and there are at least uh, one faculty member on duty in each dorm. Over the two hours, they are checking in with students, giving support, and creating an atmosphere conducive to learning. It is intended to be a quiet time, allowing students to be productive. A second option is the library or supervised study hall. These two locations offer a separate setting for students to complete their work. These are intended to be quiet spaces with a proctor available to answer questions or able to direct students to potential resources. The library is often used by students working on a group project that live in separate dorms, and students can be recommended to attend the supervised study hall by an advisor or teacher, and the library is available by sign up. Lastly, Cushing offers a more structured study hall that is limited to eight students. It is a proctored, class, proctored by classroom teachers and similarly is a quiet place for students away from their dorm rooms. Students can be recommended to it or request to attend. Proctors will communicate with the academic support team on the student study hall plan when they begin and what is accomplished over that period of time. As you've heard, communication is a huge, is a huge part of what we do in academic support. An additional way that we share our work with families is through academic support updates. These occur roughly once a month, beginning in September and continuing through May. It is not our only means of communication, of course, but these provide helpful benchmarks to reflect on progress made, outline specific challenges, and the strategies that we will be exploring further. 
It is a narrative. And while we are consistently checking in on assignment completion and weekly grade reports with students, the academic support updates are through our lens, focusing on the process as well as the holistic approach that we take with students. And the holistic approach is at the forefront of what we do here. At the core of what we are is building relationships with our students that serve as the foundation of making meaningful progress in various facets of their life at Cushing. To this point, one area that sets our program apart is the overall number of students each academic support teacher has. Our low student to teacher ratio allows us to know each child on a more personal level, which in turn allows our academic support teachers to provide individualized support that truly meets them where they are. These supports range from the purely academic, such as how we work with students to craft an effective thesis and appropriately use primary documents to support beyond the classroom, such as helping students schedule their mornings so they have enough time to shower, eat breakfast, and make it to class on time. We know and believe that one size does not fit all. So through the lens of, of excuse me, so through the use of evidence-based strategies, we seek to tailor each student's experience and academic support directly to them. As neurodiverse as our learners are, our department seeks to support the whole student, not just a diagnosis. And now I will send it back to Dr. Willis as she will facilitate the answering of some of the questions sent in advance. Mr. Deflon, thanks so much. Um, thank you, yes, to those folks who contributed questions as part of the registration process. Um, I expect that as folks came in with uh, questions, hopefully many of them were answered during the sharing out from our faculty. Uh, we do have a little bit of time now that we'll answer some of those um, questions that did come in through registration. And then we're going to have additional Q&A time at the end um, once we hear from students and our parent. But uh, there were two or three questions we wanted to just tackle here that, that related more closely to what we just spoke about. Um, one question that just came through on the Q&A uh, that we'll answer here um, is uh, about the decision, sort of the one-to-one -one or the four-to-one setting and sort of how we arrive to that decision in terms of where a student is going to be best served. Um, the sort of short answer is right around now is when we engage in that process really through the admissions process working with families. Um, if we have not had a conversation uh, yet, please reach out and let's go ahead and do that. We um, review educational testing, which Chandra mentioned is really for us a, a small piece of the puzzle, but frequently gives us some good information, um, but also want to know things about what a student has had previously for any academic support, um, potentially what their goals are for being here at Cushing, what their courses may look like, uh, just all kinds of information to inform that choice, um, that selection, and then uh, sort of that's how that, that conversation plays out typically. Um, we have uh, some other questions that came in that we wanted to touch base on. One was about the frequency of check-ins, uh, which I think Deb and Riley both touched on, so hopefully uh, had heard that. We see students four times a week as part of their regular academic schedule. Um, who utilize extra help with teachers, which is a little bit more informal. It may be kind of a one-off. It may be a weekly standing meeting with a teacher, um, but that's also uh, an option that is available here. Um, academic support is uh, really focused on cross-curricular skills and habits. And so we are looking at, at things that are going to support students across all of their classes, um, sort of in contrast to a tutoring model. Um, the other sort of note as I'm talking about that uh, is that the four times a week that we meet with students are scheduled right in. Uh, there is additional points of contact that we have with students as well, whether that might be um, proofreading a paper during study hall or uh, scheduling an additional time to connect leading into um, an assessment or finals or something. Uh, and so our relationships with students, you know, those conversations and meetings also can uh, extend beyond the specifically scheduled times. Um, we received a question that was really about uh, what are some of the educational strategies that are used in academic support um, and noting specifically ADHD, or dyslexia, executive functioning. Um, and I, Mike, I'm hoping uh, you might take a swing at that one and other folks can jump in as well, but the question is really about educational strategies. Uh, the second part of that question asks about how our approach um, differs from other schools, uh, which you can sort of figure out how you wanna tackle that component of it as well if you can fit it all into one. <laughs> Thanks, I'll definitely do my best. And it's great, these are great questions. Um, and I think they uh, highlight a few key aspects of our academic support program. 
Uh, first, to, to address the first part, as far as academic uh, or educational strategies are concerned, there's a wide, wide range of evidence-based strategies that are taught and practiced throughout academic support. Uh, we will often talk about the student's toolbox, uh, and some will transition to Cushing with strategies that need just shifts or tweaks to, to make a certain strategy effective for them, and other strategies that we need to build from the ground up. And uh, just as no two of our students are the same, our approaches are unique to meet, meet each of those students' needs. Um, on a daily basis, we can use audiobooks or whiteboard walls or whiteboard tables to graphic organizers or outlines. Um, there's always that uh, balance that our department works to achieve uh, with the support that we offer while trying to grow that self-advocacy, those self-advocacy skills and uh, just, you know, create more of an independent learner. You know, as far as ex executive function strategies uh, are often practiced uh, throughout our department, we work with everything from physical planners and agendas to Google Documents, uh, Google Keep, um, but ultimately is the flexibility and depth of knowledge of this department uh, that is part of unique to what we offer. Uh, similarly, in working with students with dyslexia, uh, right now I'm practicing using cover overlays with uh, one student and another student, we're focusing more on comprehension strategies. And again, ultimately it comes down to where they are as a learner and how we can best support their individual growth. Um, throughout most of what my colleagues have shared, but in a broader sense, most of what uh, attracted me uh, to Cushing in the first place was how this program felt like it was a fabric of the school and these array of opportunities for students within academic support and, and the variety of support that they can receive, uh, along with uh, um, opportunities in the arts, athletics, and so, so on, um, uh, is, is, uh, it was really just you know, much of what, what first struck, stuck out to me personally. Um, and that this part program doesn't limit electives um, or activities, and uh, that was very important. And I feel fortunate to be part of a community that feels the same way, and one that has shown it for many years. Awesome, thanks very much. Uh, keep these questions coming, they are uh, super helpful. The, another one that came early through the registration process um, asked about or sort of said that you'd like to learn about Cushing's academic support, including ESL for international students. Um, and I will note that those are two distinct programs that we have here on campus. Um, but Deb, I was wondering if you would talk a little bit about maybe how they interact and how they're different. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, over the years, we really have been able to work with students who are both enrolled in English as a second language, who might also have a learning disability. And I feel like that was sort of a pinnacle for Cushing is uh, a lot of those students were finding, having a hard time finding a place where they could sort of work on both of those areas. Um, so we have worked closely with our ESL department to make that happen. We currently have a number of uh, international students in our program. Um, for some of whom English is their second language. Uh, and, you know, obviously uh, it, it, it adds a layer of challenge, um, but our, uh, you know, we work hard to, to find the right um, combination for, to support those students. Uh, and we also, you know, I guess through the application process would really look carefully to make sure um, that the student profiles sort of matched what we would be able to support because we would never want to or hope to set a student up for, um, you know, a, an unfortunate scenario. So we always do our best to sort of forecast whether we are the right fit in the right program, um, but we have tailored that so it can work for an ESL and academic support student. This popped through uh, before we transition to our students, uh, who I think are probably gonna be the star of the show, um, but a question about whether or not students must have an IEP or testing in order to be considered for academic support? Um, and the very simple answer is no, uh, that is not a required component um, of participation in our program. Uh, we have students certainly, um, you know, many to most probably have some uh, documentation as part of their educational history, but it's not required. Uh, we also, you know, have plenty of students in here who uh, are, are, don't have sort of that technical documentation. Um, and so we collect other points of information throughout the admissions process, um, and that is a helpful piece, but not, not a required one. 
Uh, please continue to drop pieces in. We are going to uh, shift now and uh, we'll save time at the end for more Q&A, but I do want to transition to introduce our current students and a current parent. Uh, so we'll have our students introduce themselves. Um, and Kaylee, I am uh, going to put you on the spot and ask you to please introduce yourself, talk a little bit about sort of where you are in your fishing experience, other things that you do on campus, uh, and then we can sort of bounce around and get everybody uh, introduced here. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Kaylee Smith. Um, I'm a three-year senior here at Cushing. Um, I was a transfer student from another boarding school, and um, I started academic support my sophomore year, and this year as a senior, I decided to sort of branch out um, and with that, I maintained um, earning high honor roll, um, and I hope to continue that within the winter and uh, the spring. I am, I play ice hockey here. I also play lacrosse, and I played um, varsity field hockey my sophomore and junior year. Um, I'm going to Sacred Heart University for ice hockey, um, their division one, and um, I live in alumni dorm and yeah, I love Cushing. <laughs> Lots to celebrate there for sure as well. Uh, Liam, will you follow up and, and introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, my name is Liam Eberhardt. I'm a three year junior. Uh, first off, I'd just like to shout out Mr. Lara and Mr. Moore because they're my dorm parents and Mrs. Harmon because she's my academic support teacher. They're a blast. They're great. Um, uh, yeah, I'm from Franklin, Massachusetts. Um, I play baseball and soccer. Um, in my freshman year, I did a little bit of jazz band, which was really amazing. I was going to do it again this year, but no, I wasn't able to. Um, and yeah, it, I'm in one-to-one -one for academic support and it helps me a lot with the executive functioning. Awesome. We will pull you all back in for some more specific questions to hear more about your experience uh, as we go. Chelsea, you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Chelsea McKette. I am a junior and I've been going, attending Cushing for three years. And um, I did academic, to, academic support freshman year and still continuing it now. Um, academic support has really have has helped me in many different ways, personally and academically. Miss um, Kesslering is um, my academic support teacher and it's in a group setting. And Miss um, Kesslering has been like such an amazing person in um, academic support and she's like a mom and she has helped me through so much and yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, Harry, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yourself? Yeah. So hi, I'm Harry O'Connor. Um, I'm a first year at Cushing, a repeating freshman, and I'm in the one-to-one -one academic coaching. And so it's helped me so much just to get done all of my work. And it's also, I miss uh, Harmon here is my academic coach. And she really walks me through things that I'm having trouble on or skills that I kind of need to work on. And I found that to be super helpful. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Thanks for being here. freshman and so we just went through this whole process and um, we were just really impressed with Cushing right out of the gate um, during kind of the open house period and then as we got to know them better it just felt like such a great fit um, especially because of the academic support program and we've just been so thrilled with um, Deb and the whole program and um, it's just been an absolute win so as a parent I know how stressful this moment can be where you're trying to figure out the best place for your child who maybe has struggled in the past or has specific learning needs and so I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, we will use you in the next sort of 20 minutes or so to, to share even more about your experience. Uh, and a thank you again to folks who have submitted questions. We have a bunch of questions um, at this point that I think will be 
really helpful to hear about. Some, maybe one student will answer uh, and we'll kind of move on. Others, uh, if you want to have a couple of folks jump in, we can do that too. Um, we had a question, what is a normal day like? What does, uh, what time does class start and finish? Uh, Chelsea, can I throw that to you to begin? Hi, yeah. Um, so class starts at 8.30 usually for me. Um, and then it usually ends at three or like even um, even earlier, like two. And um, yeah, and I usually have a sport right after. So I go straight to a sport right after um, class ends for me. Awesome. Liam, will you jump in and sort of talk about, I mean, your day is going to largely have a similar structure, but you want to also just jump in and sort of talk through what your day looks like? Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, for me, it really just depends on, you know, when I'm waking up and stuff like that. You know, I could be waking up at six to go for a run it, it or, you know, I could just be lazy and wake up like everybody else. Um, you know, my classes usually, usually start at 830. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm lucky on Thursdays and I might be able to sleep in a little bit till nine. Um, and usually my classes go to like 225 or 315. But, you know, there's good chunks of time in there to get some studying done or get a lift in over at the field house um, or talk to a teacher, um, which I would use that time wisely during the day. Um, and then from there, I usually go and stretch and stuff like that before practice. I get my practice done or I go for a lift and stuff like that. Um, go to the dining hall, uh, usually chill with some guys in the dorm and then, you know, hit the books at eight to 10 for study hall. That's pretty much the day, so. It's a full day, thank you. Particularly if you're getting like three workouts in, what are you doing? <laughs> I would like to vouch, I have seen him on that 6 a.m. run, even yeah. in the cold, dedicated. No doubt. Um, we have uh, we have a question here that's about challenges and opportunities for somebody arriving in their junior year. Um, we don't have a student in that exact situation, but Kaylee, I know you came in as a sophomore, so I'm wondering if you would just talk a little bit more broadly about transitioning from a different school to Cushing. Yeah, so I went to a different prep school um, my freshman year, and I was not offered the same support that Cushing. Um, offered. Uh, I completely struggled. I was getting like C's and D's in my classes. And as I pre previously mentioned, I'm now getting straight A's. Um, so clearly there's a huge jump in that. Um, not, um, it's definitely hard going into a new school, but I think Cushing is such a loving community and kind of everyone just huddles around you, whether that's, I had Miss Harmon and she was just a great outlet for me to talk to her about like stuff I was frustrated with, whether that was on the field or on the ice or just like socially um, or just like frustrated with like homework and she would, I had a planner and I could like see it all. So for me, it was really nice to like sit down every night and I could always text her about homework or text her about an essay that I'm kind of like confused on. And she would always be super helpful in that way. Whereas at my old school, I would never get that kind of support. It was kind of just you're left out to dry and like, hopefully you do your best. Um, so definitely for me, it was a great jump to make. Kaylee, um, may I ask you to just comment on a couple of other things too that I think are significant. So yeah. just talk a little bit about how um, you opted not to do academic support this year. Yeah. But actually before that, I wanna to interject too that we spent a lot of time talking last year when you committed for ice hockey, um, what you needed to do course-wise. Yeah, so um, course wise this year I am in two APs um, and I had never even taken an honors course prior to this year. Um, so it's definitely a big jump but um, with Ms. with Miss Harmon um, like four, four times a week, I did get those study skills that I need that I like learned how to study for a test so to start maybe three days earlier, four days earlier whereas before I'd probably start the night before. Um, and it was definitely, Finding a school for me, um, hockey-wise and academically, it definitely had to fit where I needed to be. Um, I definitely didn't want to go to a school where I would just be drowning in work and not understanding how to kind of time manage everything. Um, and I chose a school that gives, I have a tutor, I have an academic support. I chose definitely a smaller school so that it's more on that one-on-one -on -one connection where like at Cushing, I have teachers 
like I don't have certain teachers, but they still know my name. They still say hi. They still know what sport I play, what I'm doing. Um, and that's just the kind of community Cushing is. And um, I mean, we all live together and we see each other in the dining hall and every place. Um, so I definitely think Cushing is a way, a different experience than most prep schools in the sense that we are a smaller school, but it's beneficial in the fact that you have a mom on campus, you have a dorm parent who's always willing to go like get you dunks or like come talk to you about maybe you had a bad day and they notice those things whereas at my old school they never did they kind of just like leave you there so thank you um harry i know you're coming from a school that that where you had good support and so i'm wondering yeah. uh if you would yeah. talk a little bit about your you transition and kind of where you're coming from and how that's yeah. going so before uh, Cushing, I was at the Carroll School, which is a school that uh, when it really focuses on, uh, so I'm dyslexic and it really focuses on that and helps you like uh, build these skills so you can succeed at your next school. So before I came to Cushing, we were kind of like, we're gonna load you up on academic support before you go in, just so it's gonna be an easy, perfect like transition. I wouldn't say perfect, but an easier transition, right? So uh, I finished the year and then we go, I go to Cushing and everyone is so nice. And coming from a school that already had academic support, it made the transition a lot easier because you would you could think it, that it would be a bit harder, like if you get less here and you've already gotten a lot there. But it's coaching, it's amazing that you come in, they start helping you out, everyone's so nice. And Ms. Harmon, she has been amazing helping me get all my work done. And it's gotten to the point where I can actually apply the skills that I've learned at the Carroll School into my work here. I'm like ahead of it so I can apply these skills that I've learned there to my work here, which is amazing. That is awesome, Harry. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Tony, I wanna pull you in kind of on the heels of Harry talking about his transition and kind of hear from you, um, maybe particularly about like your partnership with, you know, with, with Ms. Harmon basically, right? With your child's academic support teacher. Can you talk about that transition and that relationship and try not to make Deb too? Uh, Embarrassed. Not to embarrass her too much, I know, right? Um, well, so um, a, a very wise special education teacher a long time ago once said to me um, that teaching these kids is like walking a tightrope because you want to push them to use their skills and grow as a learner, but you don't want to overwhelm them. And so it's this really tight rope that you walk of pushing just an, enough so that they're learning and growing, but um, but giving them the support that they need and not overwhelming them. And I think Deb um, just gets Harry. I mean, I mean, all I can say is a couple months in, Harry said to me, he goes, "I don't know, Mom." He's like, "She just she gets how my brain works. She she understands how I learn." It was like mic drop. Like, okay, we're we got the right thing going here. Um, and so I think it's. It's been hugely helpful um, with him kind of on that tightrope of she gives him the support that he needs so he doesn't feel overwhelmed so that he can really stretch himself academically and have success and and use all those tools that that he's learned and the new ones that she's teaching him. But also, I mean, he's my kid, so I think he's the best, but he's so bright and it allows him to, you know, show that side of him and and really master his classes and participate and get everything out of them because he kind of has this support behind him um, that's academic, but it's also very social, emotional too. Um, she helps him just kind of fill out the paperwork he needs to fill out or give him reminders or just encourage him to think about things that I would have if I was with him every day, you know, like, okay. In a way that he really needs just that little bit extra kind of life support, um, which is huge. And then she's been such a great support to me too, because when I, you know, um, am worried about something or just want to highlight something, um, you know, I just shoot her an email and, and of course she gets right back to me. And, um, and so it's been a great kind of touch point for me to make sure that Harry's getting everything that he needs, um, especially as a freshman. And this is his first time 
um, living away from home and boarding. And so it's a big transition. And, and when you struggle with kind of some executive function pieces, um, those kind of life skills are a little bit harder for you and, and kind of living on your own in a dorm, you, you kind of just need that extra little loving push sometimes. So Deb's been really hugely helpful. We, athletics has come up a couple of times and we do in fact have a number of student athletes uh, sitting here with us. So uh, no surprise, we have a question here uh, for student athletes in particular, um, sort of how do you manage your schedule? Does the support, does academic support help uh, in that process at all? Um, and specifically, do you ever have to miss uh, sports because of academic support or something along those lines? Uh, I don't have, I'm looking at a whole group of athletes, yeah. Kaylee, is that you? Um, yeah, I've never missed um, anything uh, for athletics or practice. If anything, if I need extended time for a test, it'll be missing my practice to take to finish my test or whatever it is. Um, but no, I've never missed any of that. And my schedule for usually, at least for the winter, um, because I have the same as everyone else, I have a seven block schedule. So I'll have like one free in my day so that my day will go from 8.30 to like 3.15. Um, my classes are a little bit longer because they're double blocks. Um, so they're about 75 minutes, 75 minutes, yep. And um, so I'll have like an hour off, I'll also have lunch. And then after um, school, obviously we have one hockey rink, but we have many um, teams on campus. And so my, um, practice schedule ranges from either first practice, so that's 3.40, or I'll have practice, like for tonight, I had practice at 5.10, um, but then we'll get back and we'll shower at the rink and then come back down for study hall and grab dinner. So academic support really helped me with like understanding that if I have late practice, that means I'm doing my homework um, before study hall or I'm getting it done during the day during a free block. Um, and definitely time managing tests and just knowing if I have a late practice, I know I'm going to be tired that I should probably start setting a day before then that I need to get that done. So, And just to clarify, I heard you say, which I think is probably true, right? You would sort of miss practice before you'd miss any class or anything. How often have you had to miss a practice for something? Um, or... I believe once. Yeah, maybe once. Okay. Just yeah. to sort of hit that home. Good thing. It was just a late block and I needed help from a teacher, so yeah. yeah. Very, very uncommon. Um, awesome. Uh, we have a question about uh, college planning. And I know, uh, Kaylee, you've been through that process. Uh, Liam and Chelsea, you all are kind of jumping into it. And, and I don't know to the extent to which your processes are similar or the same, although Liam, I, I know that you've been kind of engaged in the college process for a while. Will you talk a little bit about what that has looked like for you so far? Yeah, um, I've been going through a lot of college stuff ever since actually like last spring we started looking at colleges when colleges started like opening and stuff like that um, through COVID. And, you know, I've been to 12 schools, I think, and I like have a list of about 17 right now. Um, I'm fortunate because I know kind of what I want to do um, and go into business and stuff like that. Um, but you know, Emily Roller and uh, Mr. Jurek and all of them have been super helpful with the whole process, um, help, helping me make lists, give suggestions of colleges to look at. Um, we're just beginning the process right now, but they've been definitely give, been giving me some good feedback. And, you know, they've been also been telling me that, you know, me and my mom have been doing a very good job looking at these schools and taking notes and stuff like that. Um, so I'm hoping I finish my like tours of colleges a little bit early. Um, hopefully at the end of spring break and stuff like that. So I don't have to worry about it too much during the summer. But um, yeah, everybody has been super helpful over in the college office. Awesome. Yeah, you, you are ahead of the game in terms of our college counseling timeline here in December. Uh, students were able to identify a college counselor with whom they wanted to work or were then assigned uh, to one of our three folks here. And those meetings, they've had their first, uh, or they're in the process of scheduling that first individual meeting. There's a combination of group meetings. Um, one of the things, uh, Liam and Chelsea, that you may or may not know is that in the spring, you'll work in your American Lit class to begin 
uh, a college essay. Uh, and that is something that academic support tends to uh, kind of be able to jump in with and, and kind of help in that process as well. Um, yeah, Chelsea Good, I was going to kick it to you. Please jump in. Where are yeah. you? <laughs> um, well, I have a college counselor on campus, and um, I just wanted to add on to um, ac with academic support with college counseling. Um, Ms. Kessling has helped me um, relax about college and stuff. I've been, um, I've been anxious and so much anxiety with the college pro process, and Ms. Has Ms. Kessling has helped me relax on it, about it, and um, also has pushed, sorry, has pushed me in many ways uh, to do well in school. So yeah. <laughs> A landline, that sounds like. Um, no, that's super helpful, Chelsea, definitely. Um, there's a question that we received that anybody can take a shot at. I think it's a really important question um, and it asks about stigma. Uh, so just sort of the idea of, is there stigma in, in being associated with academic support or kind of like what's the broader culture on campus? Is there a student who'd be willing to kind of either share your experience or talk more broadly? Liam and Terry, it looked like maybe you both were up for it. Liam, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'll put myself out there and, so, and stuff like that. And I'll tell you that my middle school, um, you know, a public school in Franklin, Massachusetts, you know, people weren't as accepting as they were here. Um, you know, and they, the academic support didn't really help that much because I met with them for may, maybe like 30 minutes, once or twice a week, and really just was nothing like it is here. Here, you know, everybody uses it pretty much. I think it's around like 30, 40% or something like that of the whole student body that uses I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna jump in and correct that stat, Liam. <laughs> Just so that we're working with the numbers, uh, we're typically right about like 18 percent, 17 or 18 percent. And then um, like where Kaylee is falls into another like seven or eight percent of students who have moved through the program. So we end up being about a quarter of our student body has had participation in the program at some point during their time here. But right. keep going. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no problem. Um, but honestly, it feels like that 30 or 40 percent just with how many people you know use it and how welcoming people are with it. It's really just a tool to help you and just to help reach your potential, whether that's in the classroom, on the sports fields, you know, in your daily life and stuff like that. You're planning out when you're going to be studying, when you're going to be doing other, uh, you know, other things in your life and really just like schedule everything that you need out. Um, I have executive functioning issues, so, you know, maybe I'm a little bit biased by that, but, you know, I really do think that the academic support helps a lot. Um, and certainly a lot more than my previous middle school life, so. Awesome, thank you for tackling that one. Anybody else wanna chime in? Chelsea. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so I think when I, when I started, first started doing academic support, I felt like um, it was embarrassing for me because like I thought that I was the only person that needed help, but a lot of people my age needed help, like around, like it's not, I realized that it wasn't embarrassing and that needing help is just, it's, it's okay to get extra help. And um, yeah, and I'm really, I'm proud of myself for um, being okay and feeling comfortable to get extra help and yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm just going to chirp in too, because that just like, Chelsea, when you say that, I, I just want to point out that all of you guys here are, you know, like you're a proctor, like you're, all of you are representative of all of our areas of school life from leadership to, you know, all different levels of athletics and involved in arts and things. So I do think like, that's just something I want to say when you were speaking, it was just nice to hear you so proud of yourself. Fantastic. Um, we have one question left that I want to have students really tackle. Uh, if there are other things that folks want to throw in, we can do that. And then one more question that, that I'll probably answer here. So if, you, if you're hanging on to a question, throw it into the Q&A because we are probably nearing the, the wrap up point here. Um, the question that I throw out to students is a pretty broad one. Is the work So you're always like ahead of the game, ready to go to class, prepared, 
knowing what you're going to do. And it's just and like that feeling of when you're like, you go to class and you know what's going on. You're like ready to really participate. It's a great feeling. Cause it's not like you don't feel like you're overwhelmed with all the work you're behind because academic support, I don't think should be about catching up, but rather getting ahead and getting on top of everything. And I think that's really what it does for us. And it's been super helpful with me. Um, and if you do get behind. If you do get behind, that's a good point. So if you do get behind, <laughs> it is like, we just work through it. We um, kind of pick out what, what the reason you were behind is because no student should just be behind without a reason. So that reason, we find that reason, we, we work on it, we find the skills for that reason. And we also manage the workloads. We start like working because I'm behind in math right now, Khan Academy, it's killing me. But we're gonna have to go back to the start and really work our way up. And it's, we gotta do it, but um, it, the academic support makes it a lot easier rather than doing it on your own. Great. Other, yeah, Kaylee, workload or something else? Um, I can add to that, I think. Sophomore year when I entered into Miss Harmon's class, I think she can agree that I was like super overwhelmed with how to manage, like just getting my assignments done. It wasn't that I had a bunch of assignments in bulk. It was the fact that I'd spend too much time on one and not enough time on another subject. And it was kind of just prioritizing different times and like writing it all out. And she would really help me with like in class, like oh, Kaylee, like you have that essay due at the end of the week. Like, why don't you start working on that if you have nothing else to do? And it was kind of just be little stuff like that that really helps you because then it's in the back of my mind now. Like, oh, like I have that essay. I should probably do an outline for it. That way I'm not super stressed out about it come Wednesday night. So it's just stuff like that that academic support really helps you with. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, the two other questions that are sort of out there that I'll just tackle here. Um, one's about whether or not uh, students need to do anything extra in the application process in order to kind of have academic support. Um, the admissions folks can answer that question directly. Really, there's a place where you sort of indicate whether or not academic support might be helpful for your child. Uh, and so to check that box begins the conversation or to shoot an email out um, to uh, any of us or to the admissions team is also sort of a, an easy way to just get that conversation going. Um, we really do, uh, you know, populate a program largely through the admissions process. And so this is when we'd prefer to be having those conversations. Um, the second question here is asking about sort of the timing of sharing documentation, whether it's an IEP or, or something along those lines. Um, and, and I would say really, we'd love to have those pieces now, uh, repeating some of the pieces, we've been doing academic support for a long time. The program's really well established. We partner so closely with the admissions folks. And so these are conversations that we're having all the time. Uh, and we are much more, uh, we're much better equipped, I would say, to support your child and to create uh, an experience here that's going to be um, you know, ideal for them as with all the information at hand. Um, and so uh, we do welcome you to send anything and everything during the admissions process so we can have that conversation about fit and support, um, but there's no additional uh, component necessarily of the admissions process uh, to consider. Ooh, we're getting them in now. Um, let's see, uh, a contact to talk about academic support. It's typically me and the admissions process as your starting point. Um, if you have heard somebody talk tonight, uh, whether it is a faculty member or a student and you wanna hear more from that person, we can also, uh, get you connected with them directly, uh, but I tend to be sort of that first point of contact um, just in my role um, in addition to doing the regular. And yeah, so it, yeah, so it would be great to kind of have uh, in a conversation. If you're up for it, we can do phone or Zoom or anything these days. Um, and so uh, I think hopefully I've answered that piece. Um, normal homework hours aside, what is the normal homework? Uh, here, I'll say this part and then I'll get feedback from the students. We have uh, a two hour study hall every night and the aim is really to have work that uh, is manageable within that two hour study hall. And so from students, um, does that tend to be kind of how it is for you in terms of fitting in study hall, getting it all done sort of typically within that study hall time? Yeah, usually you know, from eight to 10. Uh, sometimes it might start like a little bit sooner, just if I know if I have a lot going on, but that's not uh, too much of the time, maybe like once or twice uh, the entire week. Um, and I don't really go over that much. I know there's some students that, you know, they'll 
go over instead of do it before, but really it's around that eight to 10 range. General agreement from our other students. Yeah, okay, yeah. T typically no more than two hours a night and, and some nights it might be a little bit lighter than that. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, <laughs> usually I get my homework done during the day. So when um, study hall hours come, I can just study during that two hour period. So it just makes it a lot easier so I can get my homework and um, I can study for tests, upcoming tests. So, yeah. And if I don't get anything done, I mean, let me restart, sorry, sorry. If I don't finish, I usually can, um, or if I need extra, like a little bit help on it, I do it during academic support. Awesome. We, uh, we do have students who kind of chatting with them while they're in college report that feeling of like in that evening time, they just kind of kick into study hall mode, like they just sort of get into that environment. And so it is a lot about both creating a, a routine and a structure, um, but also as Chelsea was pointing out, helping students also identify the times of day when they're most uh, likely to be able to kind of dig into that work and, and sort of, you know, organize and, and build lifelong skills in that way. Um, I wanna be respectful of time. Um, and it seems like we have kind of hit the questions and, and the answers. Uh, and I'm sort of scanning my faces to see if anybody's like, wait, one more thing. Um, but I think that we are uh, in pretty good shape. So we're really grateful to audience members uh, for joining us this evening. It's really not a true ending. Um, you know, We're definitely available for further questions, conversations in the days ahead and the weeks ahead as you continue this process. Um, and I know that uh, the Zoom format sort of, uh, despite its limitations, really feels like a good way to share our program with you. So I hope that you have found it helpful um, and informative. Uh, the piece that really is missing is just the opportunity to like sit with you and uh, give you a chance for um, just getting a feel of kind of uh, how the students interact and, um, you know, most notably to learn about you and, and your student uh, and your family. So. We hope that you will stay engaged with us throughout the admissions process. Um, and yeah, the admissions team can connect you with any of us directly and we can set up a phone or Zoom or any of those wonderful uh, communication modes these days. So thank you for joining. Uh, deep appreciation for the, the folks who joined us, um, faculty, students, Tony as a parent. Um, I hope that audience members walk away feeling, uh, you know, not only a sense of confidence about our program uh, here at Cushing, but also really an appreciation for the people who, who bring it to life and, and uh, you know, bring that community feel that Fabian, Fabian even noted. So we look forward to staying connected. Uh, hope to talk with you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you.